It's rough. Die time! It's tough. That's the winner, I'll tell you now! It's rockability. I can't speak! <sighs> Get oxygen jump on. Hello and welcome to the Pro Base Tri Line, the Rugby League podcast for the independents. I'm Rob O'Neill and it's good to have you with us again for this very special edition of the programme. At this stage, I can't guarantee that we will be returning in our weekly format, but this little offering will at least get you in the mood for the excitement and drama to come in Super League 17. The first round of matches are kicking off this weekend and we've got interviews galore, which you can either listen to as normal as a podcast or alternatively, you can watch it all in vision. It seems like only yesterday we are at Old Trafford for the 2011 Super League Grand Final. Well, guess what? We're back here again now. This is the Pro Base Twiline, the Rugby League podcast. And it's a Phoenix Multimedia Productions audio presentation for the independents. This is the Pro Base Twiline. Well, here we are then at Old Trafford getting ready for the start of the Super League press conference to launch the new season, which is just a few days away. Excitement obviously building amongst the fans, supporters and the media. There's plenty here packed out Old Trafford waiting to hear the thoughts of Richard Lewis, the chairman of the RFL. We'll also be hearing from a number of the key players who are involved in the action. I'm talking about the coaches, a few new guys as well we'll be chatting to as they look to try and make their mark in the competition. It's going to be an action-packed season and we'll be covering it in the Pro Base Tri Line. Now 2012 promises to be the dawning of a brand new era for the Super League. There's so much to look forward to this year from a new sponsor in Stobart, new stadiums at St Helens and Salford, new rules and the Witness Vikings return to the top flight. I'm sure the question on everybody's lips in this room today is will we have a new team lifting the Stobart Super League trophy at this iconic venue? in eight months' time. It only seems like yesterday, doesn't it, that uh, Leeds Rhinos captain Kevin Sinfield lifted that trophy to claim the Rhinos' fifth Super League title, making them the most successful club since the competition was established in 1996. The 14 Stobart Super League clubs will hit the campaign trail this weekend for the opening round of the competition and the Sky Sports cameras will be at witness on Friday night for their return to Super League when they face a new look Wakefield Trinity Wildcats and 24 hours later Salford City Reds will begin life at the superbly appointed City of Salford Stadium when Castleford Tigers under their new coach Ian Millwood head across the Pennines. And now it's my job to tell you about one or two uh, progressive changes that the Sky Sports Rugby League team will be uh, getting underway this year. We're going to have a broadcast of a new one-hour live show each and every Sunday evening called Super League Full Time, where we will feature highlights of all the weekend's Super League action. That's going to go in a regular slot every Sunday night on Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports 2. It's going to be another summer of stunning 3D on Sky. We'll have matches throughout the year in 3D for our viewers. The first is going to be on March the 30th, Warrington against St Helens. And keep your eyes peeled and your ears open for lots more matches live in HD and 3D throughout the course of the year. And to top our coverage, we're delighted at Sky to welcome the current Wigan and England international Sam Tompkins to the Sky Sports Stable. He's committed to the sport, of course, for the next five years, and he will be part of the Sky Sports Super League team throughout this season and beyond, covering regular matches and being part of our Super League Supermen series. Well, there are other exciting new changes for 2012 coming along as well. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the chairman of the Rugby Football League, who will tell you all about them, Mr Richard Lewis. Thanks, Eddie, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's really good to be here again at Old Trafford at the launch of the new season. A season that promises to be as exciting and unpredictable as ever. And can I particularly welcome Canada Rugby League, who are here with us this afternoon. I can't quite say that it adds an international d dimension to proceedings, because we've got Steve Mascord here as well. But Steve, to be honest, you are a bit more of a familiar face. But welcome to you, Steve, but also to Canada Rugby League. Delighted to welcome Stobart as a new title sponsor of the competition. This is a significant partnership for sport with a nationally recognised brand. We look forward to working with them over the next three years in what will be a proactive partnership with one of the most recognised brands in the UK, 98% brand recognition, 
And when you compare that to BBC Five Live on the radio that only has 50% brand recognition, I think that really does position Stobart as one of the most recognised brands in the country. In a difficult economic climate, it was very satisfying indeed that we were able to, to we were in a position to turn down other offers for this sought-after property, and which will still leave us plenty of room to deliver very valuable commercial partners, partnerships, which we'll be, we will be announcing over the next few days and weeks. As you know and have seen, one of the things that will be happening is to brand some of the Super Stobar fleet of trucks with, with club-specific branding. It will mean that the Super League brand and the club brands will be seen on the motorway networks across Britain and Europe. It's really good to have an affinity with an established super brand, FTSE 250 company, and it will bring considerable advantages over the coming months. We believe, and so does Stobart, the Super League is sport as it should be, with many attributes that we all love about Rugby League. Sporting rivalry at its best, intense competition, a vibrant spectacle for the viewers and fans attending matches, brilliant skill and honesty on the field of play, played by what I believe to be some of the toughest, most dedicated athletes on the planet. The Super League family welcomes Witness Vikings return to the elite they deserve their place in the competition, having successfully come through the licensing process. As well as being Super League's latest club, they are also the first club to lay the iPitch technology at the Stobart Stadium. The first stadium in the country to have this new surface. And I am sure we will see other clubs and sports follow suit in the years to come. The rebrand of London Broncos is a significant step for the club as we seek to raise our profile in the capital and we'll give the Broncos a clear identity that will enable the sport to prosper, especially with the recruitment of a strong squad in 2012. We look forward to welcoming two new stadiums to Super League, St Helens Langtree Park and Salford City of Salford Stadium. In the last 10 years, we have seen up to 15 renovated or new facilities. I said it wasn't going to come and mention Warrington's uh, completed ends of their stadium, but uh, that is also another a stadium improvement this year. And it really does demonstrate the progress made by all clubs to improve facilities for their supporters. New rule changes will come into force this season, which will speed up the game and continue to make it an attractive proposition for tele television viewers and general fans of the sport. The key changes are a player came, coming into contact with a corner flag in the act of scoring a try will not now be deemed to be in touch. And a reduction in the number of interchanges from 12 to 10. It puts more emphasis on stamina and gives players increased opportunities to apply their skills. We are very pleased indeed that Sky Sports will continue to support the game at the highest level. It's the first year of the new five-year agreement. Our partnership with Sky Sports continues to thrive and at the end of this new agreement we'll see the partnership come of age for the 21-year association. And I see today that Cricket have described their new agreement as astounding given the current economic climate. Well all I can say is that on that basis, I really am struggling to come up with an adjective that adequately describes how good our new TV agreements are. The appeal of Rugby League as a television spectacle shows no signs of diminishing. Viewing figures on Sky Sports for Super League matches in 2011 were excellent, and we are now the most watched domestic league outside of football on their platform, and the fourth most popular televised sport in Britain, with an excess of 23 million viewers last year. Sky Sports will continue to push the boundaries this year and I am delighted to be announcing that they will be extending their coverage with the in introduction of live Monday night fixtures, beginning with the Leeds Rhinos versus St Helens on Monday, May the 21st. In all, Sky will televise 10 matches on a Monday evening between May and August with 12 Super League teams featuring. Sky have had great success in driving excellent viewing figures for their Monday night sports coverage especially Premier League football, and it is positive that they want to showcase the Super League in what sports broadcasters regard as one of the most desirable spots across the globe, as we have seen with the NFL in the USA 
and the NRL in Australia. We continue to work with the national media in terms of developing our market share of coverage. We have seen when national newspapers cover the sport in the right way that circulation increase, increases, which is significant when the newspaper industry are seeing circulation figures fall across the board. And we are also leading the fight against the proposed cuts to BBC local radio. And we have spoken to our counterparts at, um, in the other big five sports who are supportive of our, of our efforts. We have to be aware that proposed cuts to BBC local radio will have serious ramifications and consequences for the sport. 2012 will see us work hard with the relevant parties at the BBC to make sure that if cuts are to be made, they have minimal impact on the output of the sports coverage at local and regional level. We saw a record number of young club trained players featured in Super League last season. A total of 101 players aged 21 or under featured in Rugby League's elite competition. All but two of the 101 youngsters were British born. The average number of under 21s in each club's 17 man squad was almost three. That's a 30% increase year on year. It is the fifth consecutive year that the sports elite competition has recorded rises in homegrown players. And it is further evidence of the investment all clubs have made in their talent identification and development programs. And finally, how pleased we are to be taking the magic weekend to Manchester's Etihad Stadium the third venue for the innovative concept since it was launched in 2007. This year's Magic Weekend will build on the memorable and solid foundations the event has laid down at both Murrayfield and Millennium Stadiums. The move to the Etihad Stadium will allow even more people to experience the unique atmosphere and spectacle and they will be able to witness sporting rivalry at its best. I'm as excited as anyone by this season, more so I think than in, to be honest, any previous season. I hope you are too. So it just remind, remains for me to wish all the clubs and all the players the very best of luck for the season ahead. And thank all of you for your continued support. Thank you. This is Proby's Tryline, your weekly rugby league podcast. Well, I'm joined by the uh, new boss of uh, Wigan Warriors. Are you looking forward to your first season, Sean, as the, the head coach? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it immensely. I'm, I'm really excited. The, the, the players have been absolutely superb. They've turned up to train every single day with loads of enthusiasm. We had a great week in Florida and um, they've, they've all turned up every single day to, to make themselves better. And uh, the team spirit is the best I've ever known at why I've been here. And, um, They've had enough of pre-season now, they want to start playing games and we're looking forward to ripping into Huddersfield on, on Sunday. You've been a big part of the success in recent seasons, but now you are the number one. Is that extra pressure? Is that something you thrive on, that, that type of uh, situation? No, it, it's less pressure to me because I, I, I'm not a natural uh, assistant. You know, I, I didn't enjoy being an assistant because I'm, I'm, I'm quite opinionated and I know the games should be played and not to be in control of training like I've been with the 18s and 20s at Wigan was quite tough. You know, I learned a lot of Michael and hopefully he learned a lot of me. But making the call now as head coach, I'm a lot more comfortable with that. And uh, you know, it's great turning up to train and doing everything what I want in training, along with Yeston and, uh, and Paul Deacon. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm looking forward to it. It's it, every day I get up, I want to get into work, and it's just a real nice place to be. And you have taken charge of the team before, of course, on, on occasions where Michael was away, so it's not like you haven't done it before. No, it's not, and, and, and many of our players, I'd say 10, 11, 12 of our players, uh, especially the ones we play another weekend, I've coached from being kids, I've known them since we're 15, 16, so they, they know the way I like to, to play, they know um, about behaviours off the field, and all my traits, they understand, you know, so it's, it, it, they, they, they understand me totally, so it's not nothing new to them at all. Will we see a difference in a approach from you, have you got a different philosophy to what Michael's uh, sort of beliefs were? Yeah, yeah I'm, Michael was very safe to first and I like to play, you know, I, I, I firmly believe we missed opportunities last year where we should have played and we've done a lot more skill with this, this pre-season than what we have done in previous pre-seasons and, and that was that was a thought process. Michael wouldn't risk them players, in, you know, because they thought that there's a chance of balls going down and, and I'm not that way, you know, I, I, I feel if you 
put enough skill work into the players, then you can exploit them opportunities. And uh, that's what I've done. It's up to the players now to make sure that they, uh, they, 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 they kill them players when they get the chance. Do you think the Wigan public as well, they demand a certain style and they want the, the ball thrown around and they want the entertainment factor as well? Yeah, I mean, we won't, we won't throw the ball around. It, it, they'll, they'll all be real, real killer players, I hope. That, that's the plan, but the, the expectation of the Wigan fans is, is immense, and, and I love that. You know, I've got a chairman and owner, Neil Lennigan, who wants the best. He wants to win trophies, and I'm glad because I wouldn't have come here unless it was the way. I don't want to go to a club where there's no expectation to win trophies and games. You know, I want to be put under pressure because I put the players under pressure. Yeah, it's very much a club where you win one title and then already the thoughts are turning to the next season and doing it again. Well, nobody nobody does that more than myself. I, I put pressure on myself. I, I don't want to win one or two. I want to win three. And so does every other Super League coach. They all, you know, ask any of them here, you know, and, and I want to make sure our, our players realistically can, can, can do that. And that's up to me and the coaches have to make sure they get all the information they can to win every single game. Because last season, Wigan um, didn't end up being the top dogs because Leeds emerged and surprised everyone by winning the grand final. Is that something that uh, you kind of, I suppose, shows that the competition is not just about one or two teams, it's right the way down to all of the qualifiers for the playoffs? Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. Um, the first year Michael came over, um, you know, we, we won quite a few games quite easily. Last year it was, a, it was a lot more competitive and I see this year being even more competitive because everybody's doing the same amount of skills, running the same lines, the same amount in the gym and all those Super League coaches are just trying to find that just extra 1% what nobody else is doing and that's what I've been doing, you know, I took my team to Florida, I've changed a few things in training and I'm just trying to do something a bit different which gives us an edge to win games. What about the personnel this season, a few changes on it, um, just outline sort of some of your thinking there. Yeah, well, I signed a couple of players from from uh, uh, Cal Crusaders when they went under uh, Ben Flower and Gil Dutchman. They were recommended by by uh, Yester, my assistant, and they've been absolutely superb. You know, they've, they've really acquitted themselves well. But I, I did feel that we needed to more pressure in our middle unit, our front row was because we lost Stuart Fielding, we lost Lee Moss last year, and, and also Paul Prescott. And having that. Uh, Competitive spirit in that middle unit affected us last year, and I don't want that again. So I signed two front rowers from the, I signed Epple and Milwaukee from Hull, another front rower who, who's a real tough uh, front rower, has a bit of fear factor about him, and I also signed Anthony Gelling, who's a centre, and I took a bit of a punt on Anthony because he's a young kid, very very skillful, but not up to speed with his de defence yet. Uh, it will be, and when he when he is, it'll be a great asset to us. And behind the scenes, as you say, Yestin Harris is he's taken a step backwards, if you will, from being a head coach. What does he? offer what does he bring to the party oh he, technically he's very very good he's very very good he's, he's a great bloke to get on with uh, he's been so far in, in a few months together he's been superb for me and just fine uh, i'm probably competing with the tano but um a quick word on the on your first game uh, i suppose after all the preparation work all coaches and players want to do is get the real thing on isn't it so yeah game time yeah. and we, yeah we're exactly the same so we're the same as the players the players are itching to get started and we're exactly the same we can't wait to get started and uh, uh, everything we've done this pre-season you know no, I'm hoping I'm going to see it again on Sunday. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cheers. Thank you. Well, I'm joined by the uh, the new coach of Hull KR. Obviously, you've had the the pre-season to get to know your players and, and work with the team. Are you ready for the big kickoff now? Yeah, we're as ready as we'll ever be. Um, you know, obviously, you know, like every coach, you probably want a little bit longer to prepare, but uh, we're on the same boat. And you know, come Friday night, you know, hopefully we'll be ready to go. Have you been surprised by the quality that you've inherited in this squad? Yes, yeah, so there's some good kids there. You know, I've been pretty impressed by, by what I've seen, and um, and I've been equally impressed by the new players that have come in as well. So, you know, as I said, hopefully on Friday night we'll be competitive against a uh, very, very good lead side. Just tell us about some of the new names that you brought in and what they'll offer. Yeah, um, Mickey Payer, uh, we got him from the Bulldogs, you know, back in the NRL, and, and he's a very dynamic sort of player, uh, good league speed. Uh, Con Micker and Sean McDonald from Newcastle, I think, um, you know, quality plays in the run right. But I'm also been pretty pleased by uh, a couple of um, boys we picked up from Huddersfield in Graham Horn and um, Dave Hodgson. You know, they bring a bit of experience to the side as well. So, you know, all in all, I'm, I'm positive that um, those boys will acquit themselves well. How much had you seen then of Rovers in the past and, and in terms of your recruitment? Was it quite difficult because I suppose you were relying on video and maybe one or two people who you knew at the club or, or you know, obviously coached in England and whatever else? Were you relying on second-hand opinion a lot of the time? Yeah, you're right. Um, a, lot, a lot of the um, players um, had already signed deals there. Um, I, I was lucky enough to be involved in, you know, a couple of 
um, players that I coached back in Newcastle, then Shannon and Con, you know, getting them on board. But um, you know, I've been I've been pleasantly surprised by by how, how good they've trained and, and how well they're going. Obviously, Justin Morgan was there quite a while and very successful, really, over the piece, and will be fondly remembered, I'm sure, by the Rovers fans. Is it a tough act to follow someone like Justin Morgan? Yeah, it, it always is. Um, but you know, I don't believe you know in following people. I just just do what I you know try and do best, and that that's coach the best of my ability, and and uh, that's all I can do. Are you looking to? I suppose is it is it evolution or revolution in terms of the way the squad's going to go about the business? Yeah, it's probably be a little bit different than what it has been done in the past. Um, you know, we, we, we brought in a few different systems and structures in place. So, um, you know, I we'll, wouldn't we'll call it a revolution, but, um, you know, it's just a few changes in the way that we play. What's the target then? I mean, realistically, he's setting the bar high in terms of what you, you think this team can set out to achieve? Yeah, for me, it's all about um, individual improvement, and, and I've set the players, you know, they've all been given some goals um, as individuals, and, and if they can improve as individuals, then our team will improve, and if our team improves, then, then you'll see some results. And for you as well, is this also about your own personal development as well? You know, a head coach, you know, in a, a Super League side, it, again, it'll put you on the map. Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't really thought about myself, to be honest. All I'm thinking about is my boys and, and you know, how well they play, but, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a fantastic experience being a head coach and, and coaching in the English Super League. It's, it's a dream come true for me, yeah. It's not just like you've moved down the road, though. You obviously come from Australia and uh, all that that sort of entails and, the, you know, the, the, I suppose the acclimatising process. Uh, how, how's that gone for you? Are you finding life in England good? I had been till last week when it started to get really cold. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's the, the people in Hull have been really friendly and, and helpful and accommodating. And um, you're right, it was, it was a big decision to move um, to move from Australia over here. But um, you know, I've got no regrets and, and I'm really enjoying it. Was it always one of your ambitions then to come coach in England? Um, I've, I've, always, I've always enjoyed, you know, in England. You know, I was here a long time ago um, playing, playing. So, you know, I've always enjoyed, you know, living over here. And um, when the opportunity came up, um, you know, I, I took it, you know, with both hands, that's for sure. Well, the first game is on the horizon. I suppose you're already set to, to kind of get to, stuck in, really, aren't you? I mean, it's all very well training and preparing, but I suppose it's all about game day, isn't it? It is, you know, and that's that's why you coach. You know, you don't don't coach to coach pre-season. You coach to, you know, coach games and plays are no different. So, you know, come Friday night, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be ready to, to be, you know, competitive. And that, that is the thing. You, you will see them in pre-season. You will see them in practice games, but you won't really see what they're like, I suppose, at full tilt, because this is the time when it all really happens, isn't it? Yeah, you're exactly right. This, this is the time where, you know, two competition points are at stake, and, and this is where you see our players perform under pressure, you see our players perform under fatigue, um, decision-making abilities, all those things that, that is a little bit harder to judge you know, in training, that's for sure. What about your opponents? What, quick word on them? Yeah, they're a very good side, you know, that they're not the champions for nothing, and, you know, look at their list. I think they've got ten players that have played for their country or are currently playing for their country and I think we've got one so it tells us that we're up against a class side and we have to be at our best if we want to be competitive. They surprised everyone in many ways haven't they the way that they came through in the end last season but that just goes to show it doesn't matter where you finish in the in the competition you have to go to the bitter end and you never know what, what will happen. Yeah if you, if you make the semi-finals anything's possible and you know and Leeds showed that and, and they played superbly in the last season and, and for me they deserve to be the, the champions because they produced the goods when it mattered. Well, all the best. No, thank you. Getting ready for that first game you're in Super League again. How does it feel? It's exciting. The lads are the lads are really looking forward to it. And again, it's it's just good to be part of the show, really. And you've been used to being, you know, part of the, the top end of rugby league, you know, all your life. And you know, this is probably uh, what it's all about, isn't it? Well, this year, it's been um, it's been a long time since I've been involved in this. Since um, since I was coach at Wigan, it's been seven years since Witness were in the Super League. So this is not it's not like it's new to us, but it's it's pretty exciting. It's something that we've really worked hard to be involved with, and yeah, yeah, it's good. It's just good to get going again. And you're not just in this competition though to make up numbers. There's a, there's a goal in there, I'm sure, to uh, to probably overachieve, and certainly in the eyes of everyone else. Well, yeah, it would, yeah, I think everybody sees that. But we we're not here just to be the rubbing rags. We we know it's going to be really tough. We know it's going to be a very very physical and sort of um, hard work of a year because we're new to it. It's, it's year zero. We've just got a brand new squad, 16 new players. So we know it's going to be tough, but yeah, we're here to make up, um, make people sit up and take notice. And you've had a bit of time, haven't you, this time around to, to prepare for it, which hasn't always been the case for sides that have come into the competition in the past. Um, I wouldn't say we've had any jump on anybody. They told us that we were available and we were in the competition, but 
we had no funding, we weren't allowed to sign players to anybody else was, so we just had our, we just had the ability to sit on our hands and wait until everybody else had a go as well. So it hasn't had too much of a jump. It's been nice to know that you're in there so you can look at sponsors and look at um, helping supporters get, get ready for it. But I think we're on level footing, if not well behind everybody else when it came to recruitment. Do you think the name though of Witness, because it's got a decent tradition, helps in terms of your recruitment and when you say, oh, do you want to come play for us, it, it, you know, it, it does appeal? No. It's a great club with a great history, but that's what it is, it's a history of seven years out of Super League. The pool of players is not huge, so finding those players is pretty difficult, and the good ones, everybody wants. So it's been a very, very tough three or four months. So yeah, we know, we know we've done it tough, and we know that it's been hard to recruit players, but we're very happy with the squad we've got. I think that they can shock a few people, and they've worked really hard in the pre-season to prepare themselves to play. I'm sure you've challenged the lads that were already here, you know, to say, can you? Go on and do it at the next level. Yeah, we took on eight blokes from the championship and we're um, we're ready to uh, move forward. They know that it's a big chance for them. It's a big chance for them to actually prove that they should be involved in Super League. So it's it's a very exciting time and there's a lot of change and a lot of um, a lot of anticipation and excitement about the place. Well, when the guys sort of line up, I suppose, on the training paddock and they, they see some of the names that are coming in and they realise what they're part of now, does that actually help bring a bit more out of the, the you know the lads that have been there already? Yeah, there's lots of professional sportsmen now. They're, um, they're not held, they don't really fear anybody, but they know that they've got their own egos to work on, but they know that if they don't bring the emotion and the effort week in, week out, then it's going to be very tough. They've played this game for a long time, they've just now got to keep, um, keep getting better. What about the first game then? What do you reckon? It's going to be tough. We know we've got a very, very physical um, side that's probably sneaking under the radar a little bit, really. Wakefield have gone through something very similar to what we've done. They've changed a lot of their staff, they've worked pretty hard, and but nobody's really taking a lot of notice to what they're doing, so it's it's going to be a very, very um, exciting game. Yeah, Richard Ago will be looking to put his mark already down on the Wildcat squad. Well, he's coming in there as well, yeah, and he's looking to spoil a, our party. We've got our home ground, first in Super League, new pitch. He won't be coming there thinking just to make up numbers, he'll be coming to work to work a number on us. So what's this pitch like then? It's not going to burn your legs then, is it? I mean, I remember those old artificial surfaces. <laughs> Well, that's the problem. Everybody's got this picture in the head about uh, what, um, what an artificial surface looked like. This is it's way beyond that. The technology is cutting edge. It's fantastic. None of the players have complained. They work, they work on it day in, day out. And I think everybody really surprised. This is the future of um, sports grounds. And the ball runs true and everything. As true as it does on grass. If you, if, if you could find a pitch and everybody replicated it, then this would be it. Grass, it doesn't run the same. Grass, it doesn't play the same. Depends on who cuts it, length of the grass, size of the pitch. But this is very, very true. Did you think twice though when they said, look, we're thinking about getting this pitch in here, was that ever a concern for you? Yeah, it was never a concern, no. I knew that the chairman and the club themselves were after doing something very innovative. They wanted to be cutting edge and we knew that it was the right kind of technology. We wouldn't have done it if we didn't think it was right. Well, all the best for the uh, first game of the rest of the season, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Mick Potter, the, uh, the coach of the Bradford Bulls, so we're ready to go again then. Another season's upon us. Uh, Another season comes oh, around quick, it doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? It's fantastic, and uh, the players are ready to go. We, you know, we, we think we probably could do with another another few weeks of pre-season, but it's upon us very quickly, and uh, 5th of February we're into the first round. Catalan's at home. We were just saying, actually, on the way here, that you know it was only seems like yesterday that we were here at Old Trafford for the grand final. Yeah, it's a, it's only a short period when you when you look back on it, but I'm sure the players would say it's been a long off season, and and I think they're more happy to get back into training because uh, I get back into playing because the training the training load drops drops right down, and uh, and they get on with what they do what they do well, and that's play. Is there enough time though for the, for the players to recharge the batteries? Because it is such a demanding you know sport, isn't it? You know they take such a hit every time they play. Well, they 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 I think there is enough time, but but it's more about can the players improve physically in, the, in a short period of time before the next season that's that's probably the question i think that the players do get enough rest but um you, know, you, you still want to improve all the time and, and every year i think the super league does get slightly better and and um, it's just how much further that can go physically i suppose that gap becomes short for the sides that do go all the way and reach the grand final and you know those weeks disappear then you on top of that you've got the internationals as well that have been uh, played this winter yeah, it's very hard. I think for the for those elite athletes that right at the top to to keep getting better, and 
although they probably, because they're right at the top of their game and, and at the, in the best in the country, they probably only need to improve just slightly every year. But but if they had a, if they had more time, perhaps they could get even better than what they are. So for your team, when the season ends, you know what what, what happens for the, for the guys? Do they go away? Have they got programs they have to follow, and then do you gradually step it up week by week, month by month? Well, they, they have a couple of weeks, couple of weeks off, and, and then they'll have their own individual programs where they'll they'll spend probably the next two to four weeks, depending on on how many games they've played prior, um, in building up, and then they're back into training, and and usually it's it's groups, small groups, depending on on their size and their capabilities and whether they've got any existing injuries. So there's a steady build up, and you periodise your training according and. You know, here we are now, talking about, about first game. What about your group then this season? Uh, how's it looking? Are you excited about the, the squad of players you've put together? I am. I think I think our squad's better than what it was last year. I, I think uh, we've got better quality personnel, and I think um, the players individually have improved. And team-wise, I think we're we're in a better position than what we were this time last year, and and that's all we can ask. And you know, we'll we'll give a good account of ourselves and. I'm you know, looking forward to seeing how we go in real competition. Just been talking to Craig at Hull KR and obviously he's come in and he's trying to make his mark with uh, Rovers. You were in a similar position last season, obviously you came in from St Helens. I don't know how many of the players that were brought in last year were, were your choice, if you will. Is this season more like what you consider your team? Yeah, I, would, I would probably say that um, last year was, was a, a was uh, a year where we were hamstrung by by some players who who were just clinging on, but but um, everyone knew they weren't going to be there, but you couldn't you couldn't do anything about it. So so this year is more like more like a team that that um, you would put out um, if a new coach was coming in. So I'm way I'm way more happy than what I what I was last year with with the squad we've got, and I think you know, given given a fair shake with with injuries and that will will go well. You think you can, you know, look for for a top eight finish? Is that realistic? You think that the group's good enough to do that? Well, we might as well not be there if we're not looking for a top eight finish. And I think as well that the fans, they've probably been a bit starved of success, haven't they, in recent years? And when you think about the heights that Bradford, you know, hit when I first started reporting in the local area on rugby league, it was all about Bradford. You were the team to catch. Yeah, Bradford, Bradford, and I think most teams have their time, have their time at the top, and <laughs> and you know they fluctuate. And Bradford's just in a bit of a lull at the moment, and yeah, we'll pull pull out of that. And I think we're in a, in a way better position this year to do that. You know, are we going to win every game we play this year? Oh, that would be doubtful, but we're going to go in with every intention of winning every game when we start the game. What about some of the players you brought in then? Just tell us a little bit about those individuals and, and their qualities. Uh, Adrian Pertel, big strapping centre. He uh, can play in the back row if you want to can play in the wing. Um, he's athletic, he can catch high balls, he's, he's very competent defensively. Uh, Keith Lalea, um, he's a he's a centre that that can set his winger up. He's a centre that can beat people, and he's he's no shrinking bottle. I think he's about six foot four. He's 100 kilos. Um, Luke Gale, you know, pivotal role for us. He's going to handle the ball just about more than anyone in the team. Great kicking game, a goal kicker, and takes a line on. And and I think you know an up and coming future England player. Um, Jared Summit. Well, Jared Jared's probably one of the fittest players in rugby league. He's he's a real guy that's hard to handle. I don't think he knows what he's doing when he gets the ball and you know, that's that unexpected, that unknown is is good to have in your team. And final word then on, the, on that first game, Castle and Dragons, who possibly surprised one or two people with their form last season after their form the year before. You know, they'll be looking to go at it again. It's, it's a tough challenge to start with. Well, people are tipping them to be top four, and you know, I don't doubt that, that that's that's a, a good ambition for them to have, and you know, it'll, it'll certainly test us in our first game to find out where we are. Um, there's no reason that, that Catlins can't be there or thereabouts. Um, they've recruited well. Liam Price, I think, is a great acquisition for them. And I, I think they've assembled a good squad, and, and I think they'll build on last year. Is it good sometimes to have a, a pretty solid, tough start you know, for the first game? Because you know, it kind of sets the bar at the standards that you need to hit every week. You know, Never mind if it's one of the sides that will end up struggling. Well, you, you're never really sure at the start, and there's always those, those upsets and there's always those games that, that go a different way to what you think they're going to go and 
um, it's, it's, it's important to start well and it's important to get some points on the board before before the season gets away from you. And, yeah, because um, it can become a problem, can't it? It becomes a mental right, thing yeah. when you start losing week you after start, week. Well, it also, also means that you've got to scramble for points at the end and, and we found ourselves in that situation where we were trying to scramble for points and we, um, we just couldn't get there. All right, well, all the best for the season. Thanks, mate. Thanks for talking to us. Cheers. Well, I'm with uh, Ian Millwood, the uh, new coach of uh, Casford Tigers. You're ready to go? I think uh, all systems go. Yeah, I think we'd like it. Players, coaches, it's uh, been a long pre-season, and we're pretty excited about it's now officially finished, and now we officially start preparing for games and looking where we need to improve and you know getting the the, uh, the adrenaline rushing and on the highs and lows. And obviously back in Super League for you as well. Does it feel good to be part of it all again? Oh, look, you know, I mean, I'm I'm a rugby league coach who. Uh, you know, I love, loves the challenge. I love my job. So you know, obviously, I went back to Australia because I I needed to see where I was as a coach and see where the game was and where the coaching was and a lot of things. You know, so you know, obviously, um, I'm excited about the job I'm about to uh, begin on and and. Um, uh, rugby league's a great sport. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very privileged to be part of it. Do you see it as the beginning now? You know, when we're about to get ready for game time, rather than all the pre-season and all that other preparation stuff oh, you've got to do. It does. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a new focus. It's uh, looking at things that we're we're trying to put into practice, and we know they're not going to be 100 percent smooth at the moment. But you know, and looking at blokes how they're advancing as as players out of a pre-season, how they handle the intensity and the highs and lows, and and the knockbacks mentally and physically, and it's just a new ball game. And, and hopefully, with my experience, I can help them through that journey. Have you found it at Casford? I always find it a very warm club whenever you go down there. Yeah, very, very warm. A uh, rugby league town that loves its rugby league. Very passionate. Everyone's passionate there. A pool that keeps to keeps uh, producing young players. There is a talent pool there, which underpins the business. So, and obviously, a, a community that are very determined to get a new stadium and I think that's very important too. So what can you achieve this season then? Keep, keep improving young players, keep improving the current players, um, underpin it with um, some consistency and let's see where the journey takes us. Just finally word on the game then that kicks it all off, what do you reckon? How do you uh, see it going? I don't know, two teams that are heavily recruited in the off-season. It's interesting to see which one has the best continuity early. Uh, too hard to call. I'd rather call the Saturday game, Salford and Cass. Are there, are there signings, though, that excite you that you brought in that you think that the fans are going to really take to? Oh, we probably brought in, well, actually, we recruited less than any other team, and Super League only recruited four players and let nine go. What we, what we did do was uh, put some of our better young players on longer term contracts, but obviously put Rangi Chase on a four year contract, the man of steel. So, you know, as much as we've been inactive in the other part, we've been active in um, trying to build for the future. So, who you keep is more important sometimes than who you recruit? Oh, well, especially when they're homegrown, they're English, and they're in your backyard, and other clubs are looking at them. Yeah, we've got a responsibility there. Brilliant. Well, all the best for it. I'll let you get okay. on. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Almost ready to uh, kick off the big season as far as Hull FC and the rest of the competition is concerned. Are you prepared? Is everything uh, as you'd like it now? Yeah, it is. It is. We'll, we'll definitely know more on Sunday afternoon after coming up against the, the title favourites, I suppose, in Warrington. But, but now I'm very comfortable where we are at the moment. How much pressure is there being the, the Hull FC coach? Because I've worked in Hull myself. I know that the fans have got high expectations and they want to win things. And I think it's been a while since they've done just yeah. that? Um, well, I've got high expectations myself and as has Adam Pearson, our owner, and definitely our supporters. So I, th I think we've all got high expectations. We feel as though we haven't probably achieved what we should have in the last few years. So um, it's time to set a few things right. Do you thrive on that pressure though? Does that sort of drive you on? Oh, it doesn't seem to play a part really. Uh, I've, I've got a job to do and I don't want to be distracted by uh, any sort of outside pressure. Um, I'll just do the job the best I can each week and um, I'm sure we'll get the results. So what about the squad that you've inherited and obviously you've added to it as well, uh, what do you make of the group you've put together? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm more than happy with what we've got. Um, we've got a new spine to the team in Wade McKinnon, Brett Seymour and Aaron Heremeyer, along with Danny Houghton and Richard Horn. so it's, uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable with what we've got. There's a lot of strike there and um, there's some good young kids coming through, so I'm quite excited about the, the, the depth of the squad too. What have you tried to add to the mix then that you felt perhaps was missing in recent seasons? Oh, I don't know what was missing, it's just um, probably
probably adding just my touch to it. Yeah, my, my philosophy as a coach and that different defensive patterns, uh, different attacking structures and that. So it's been a revamp of the whole club, really. Um, there's all new staff and uh, there's you know, eight, nine, ten new players. So there's a, it's a real new feel to the club. What can the supporters expect from your approach, though? Are you a guy that likes to have his teams entertain as well as winning or is it all about winning at all costs? Yeah, well, uh, you've got to earn the right to entertain. So we get our defence in order. Um, there's enough talent, enough strike there to score some, some nice tries. We've, we've already showed that, but we need to get our defence in order and earn the right to play that sort of footy. And for you as well, to test yourself in the Super League competition, is that a challenge? Yeah, it's been a challenge for a long time. Um, I've, uh, it's always been on the horizon, a, a job over here, and, and I've finally been able to, to secure a role, and I'm more than happy to be Hull FC's head coach. I'm loving it. Yeah, I think your name was linked with a few jobs, wasn't it? And uh, I don't know how close you were to going elsewhere, but uh, here you are at Hull. Oh, were, think, were you close to going elsewhere? No, I, I, think, I think my name was linked to more jobs than, uh, than, I, knew, than I was aware of. But no, nah, when, when this job came up, this is the only one I really wanted, and um, I was fortunate enough to secure it. Yeah. What about the process in terms of that, that, that sort of move? Was it you actively? looking to come to Hull and, and sort of say look I'll be keen or was it them chasing you? Oh it was, uh, it was probably through um, Sean McRae I suppose, he spoke with Adam Pearson the new owner, he was looking for an Australian coach um, Sean, I, I met Sean once before but he rattled off a few names and I think there was an interview process and, and away the way it went from there And how will it work in terms of the, the structure of the club, it, I suppose in many ways it's good having an experienced guy who's, who's you know, he's coached some top clubs already himself, you, you can use that experience as a fallback to help out. Yeah, yeah. Sean's uh, he's relishing his new role too, and we've got boundaries in place that we don't encroach on each other's area. And uh, but he's been a great sounding board for me in a lot of areas. Maybe he's probably got to that as he got to that stage where maybe he wants to take a bit of a backseat from the day-to-day -day grind and, and allows you to kind of do the coaching and do the, the sort of hard sort of day-to-day. -day yeah, well, that, that was part of his role was to to step out. Of, and it was more, one of my first questions in the uh, in the interview was uh, what was Sean's role going to be and uh, he, he made it blatantly obvious then that he, his coaching days were finished and um, to his credit he, he stayed away from training, it's been good. Do you see yourself being here long term, is this kind of a long term strategy? Yeah, yeah well I've, I've got a three year contract and uh, I'm not using it as a springboard to get back to NRL or, or any of that, I, I'm really enjoying my time here and if three turns into five I'll, I'll be more than happy or eight, ten, yeah, we'd, we'll just take it as it comes but um, the main priority is to, to make Hull FC a, a formidable force again. Just finally, a word on the opening uh, round for you. What do, what do you make of your, your starts? Uh, we got Warrington first up, and then Catalan. So it's not ideal, but um, but you know, this time of year, everyone's uh, high hopes. So it's good to jump in and test yourself against a couple of the uh, uh, the more probably favoured teams. Well, that's what I was going to say. Sometimes it can be a good thing when you, you play the, the stronger sides because that kind of is the standard that you've got to hit week in week out. Because yeah. if you play a side that might end up being at the bottom of the pile, you get a false sort of position. Don't you about what it's all about? Yeah, I know. I know our players are quite excited about playing Warrington, as I am. Yeah, it's a real uh, benchmark game for us. We'll let, let us know how how we are travelling. Uh, I know it's only early, and we'll be improved by it. But uh, but it's it's great to jump in the deep end. Brilliant. All the best with it. All right. Thank thanks you very a lot. Much. Appreciate your time. Well, with Roy Simmons, the uh, coach of the St. Helens, uh, you're ready for the season again. Then uh, it just seems like yesterday you were playing that grand final. Yeah. It, um, yeah. It still hurts a bit, doesn't it? Uh, and it uh, was just out here, and it. Um, but what I was impressed with uh, is when I've got back to training. Uh, I was worried the boys were going to turn up for pre-season a bit deflated, and you know, and said, "Oh, we got beaten in the grand final again," and that's what I was expecting. And they've just turned up with the greatest attitude, and their commitment to the training's been sensational. The team spirit's been really good. Um, you know, and all the things we can measure. Uh, they've improved, you know, their, 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 their strength's up, their speed's up. Uh, so anything we can sort of measure, they've improved in. So it's been a great, a great uh, off-season for us. So we've improved in a lot of areas. Was last season's grand final appearance a bit of a surprise and a bonus, really? Did you, you know, trying to look at a positive from what was a negative in terms of the result of the day? Oh, I suppose if you looked at the start of the season and you said to me, look, at various times during the year we're going to have 12 and 13 players out and you're going to lose both your halves and and you know go on and go on with it and you're going to get to a grand final you probably would have taken it but at the end of the day we did get to a grand final and um, in the build up to it you know I was confident that we could win the game so 
So at the start of the year, yes, I might have accepted it, but by the end of the year, no, we we're, you know, were in there just like Leeds were. I'm um, sure Brian thought he could win, and I certainly thought I could win. And uh, you know, at one stage, with about 20 minutes to go, I thought we were going to win, but uh, it wasn't to be. And um, so we're going to get on with this year. You mentioned some of the adversity that you experienced throughout the course of the season, and what you did learn, which I suppose you don't know until you get into that position, is that the young guys could step up and they could play for you. Yeah, well, we didn't have much of a choice there. They, they had to play. It was a nice surprise, yeah, though, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. Didn't know for certain how they would go. No, but at the end of the day, they had to because we didn't have anyone else. So they, so they had to play, and um, and you know what. I, you look back now and you think, well, if we didn't get them injuries last year, a lot of these boys might have got one or two first grade games. In the end, they end up playing about 20. So the depth now is a little stronger because we've we've had all them players play some game. The confidence of uh, certainly our halves, uh, you know, in in Lee and Johnny, well, they're at training now and they're telling blokes where to get and what to do. Well, you know, go back 12 months ago, they weren't doing that. They were just young kids you know, following others around the park, so all of a sudden they feel like they're a part of the team, and that's important to feel like you're a part of the team. And there's other young blokes doing the same thing. Tommy Muggerson, you know, he come in playing on the wing, you know, the first time a bomb goes up, the doubt's in your head whether you're going to catch it, but, you know, you've, it, all of a sudden now you've caught 40 or 50 of them, and you've crossed the line, scored some tries, you've, you know, you've tackled the big winger that we were playing against. Uh, a lot of confidence comes with that, so... You know, um, a lot of them younger boys are, um, are a lot more confident about what they're going to do. And, but they just, what's important now, they've got to maintain um, the good training and the consistency that they've shown over the last uh, couple of months of training. If they do that, they'll get their rewards. I suppose the, the thing about young players and development as well is it is a fine line because opportunity is really a, there to be taken when you get it. If you get the opportunity to play in the first team, you've got to grab it with both hands. There'll be players over the years that have gone by the wayside that might look great at junior level but never got that breakthrough. You know, your guys came in there and they, they did. They seized the opportunity. And like you say, they've, they've felt the confidence and the re rewards from it. Yeah, over the years I've seen a lot of promising uh, um, young players be given an opportunity, play a good game or two and uh, then lose their way a little bit, you know, and start uh, worrying about the limelight and a few other things before worrying about footy and uh, uh, to the credit of these boys so far, they haven't done that, they've, they've really stayed committed and I, I think a lot of that goes down to a lot of um, really true professionals in our club, you know, there's some senior boys there that are great professionals, uh, have been for a long time now and will continue to be, and uh, and the players we recruited this year, our senior players we recruited this year, are all great professionals as well. Is there a danger, and, and something that I suppose you, you've sort of alluded to already, that they, they have to be wary of the fact that they're now marked men, that people are no longer kind of seeing the surprise factor, that they're established stars, that I suppose the second season syndrome you've got to avoid? Yeah, but you certainly have, I mean, uh, End of the day, um, some of the opposition now pay a lot more respect to you. That's one, but uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that can be a good thing sometimes. The, the players start paying a lot of respect to you. you there's always there's uh, as much as they can try to talk out of things. They still got a healthy respect for you, so that can worry the opposition just as much as uh, you know as anything else. But um, the other thing. Everyone knows them now in a lot of places, you know, so again, you've got to be careful, you know, as I call it, the limelight or whatever you want to call it, but you've got, you've got to have your head around being a true professional and not get caught up in other things that, uh, that, that don't make you a better footballer. So what about the squad then, uh, adjustments you've made, tell us about them and how you feel they'll improve you? Um, well, we've, you know, we've added anything LaFranchi to our um, to our pack. I mean, you know, we've had a big loss in, in James Graham uh, leaving the club. I mean, last year he was voted, uh, I think, the, the front rower of the best front rower in the world. So, I mean, um, so we're not going to put too much pressure on our boys coming in to try to, um, you know, try to play the way James Graham does. We want um, Anthony to come in and play his own style of football. You know, he's, he was a back rower back in Australia. We've moved him to the front row now. He's getting he's getting a little bit older. We think he's more suited to the front row. Um, I think he will make a real good um, good partnership with James Roby. I think they're going to get on the same page there and work well together. Um, and we've also got Josh Perry. Didn't play much footy last year. 
Um, we hope uh, Josh uh, gets over his injuries and uh, he, you know, um, he, he got a a good 40 minutes out the other day against Witness, so there's another bonus. We've also got Louis, Louis McCarthy there and Paul Clough and uh, um, Sean McGuinness. So we've got quite a few front rowers there, but I don't want any of them thinking they've got to compare with James. They've just got to get their own style about and play their own style of footy. But uh, Anthony brings a lot of experience to us. As I said, he, you know, he's played uh, 2005. He played for the West Tigers and won a grand final. He's played for New South Wales. He's played for Australia. So obviously a class football. Uh, Lance O'Hire has uh, joined us. Um, Lance has played for 10 years for the Warriors and any player that plays 10 years for one club, obviously a real professional because clubs don't keep blokes if they don't you know, don't do their job for 10 years uh, and he, he's come across to join us now. We've trained Lance mostly in the halves uh, during the um, our pre-season but uh, we've also run him at full back and at hooker so he brings a lot of depth to us in a lot of key positions. Uh, it's very handy to have a bloke who can play 9, 7, 6 and 1, you know, they're, they're very hard to find, I don't know many of them so he brings a lot of depth and again a, a true professional and uh, our young halves are I really doing a lot of work with him, learning from his experience. And Mark Fleming, I think it's super that uh, we're bringing a, an Englishman back from NRL back in the Super League. You know, there's, uh, you know, in my opinion, too many. You know, there's only been a few, but I don't like to see players leave here and go to Australia. You know, the quality players are over there. Um, you know, we should be, I think, seen over here playing on the, you know, in the Super League. But uh, I think it's just super for us to bring back a young bloke that uh, backed himself, went over there at his own cost. Uh, um, you know, got his ho own house over there, signed a small incentive-based contract with uh, West Tigers. I think his first year played 17 or 18 first grade games, and the second year played 10 or 11 um, plus some semi-finals in his second year. So uh, again, exciting young. young Young player that, uh, that uh, we're looking forward to playing with, and again, a true professional. And that's one of the things we really made sure we did when we bought the players. We made sure all our players that were coming were true professionals to join in with our other senior members. There's a lot to look forward to, and there's also the new stadium as well, which is another exciting factor about this season. Yeah, the the new stadium uh, is fantastic. Uh, you know, the, the chairman of the board they've done a fantastic job there. Um, just walking around the the stadium, looking at the all the variety of pictures of the old champions that are on the walls and around the concourse and up through the sponsors boxes and all that. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You know, you you're looking at these blokes who played five or six hundred games. They've been recognised at their own town. In their at their own ground at a rugby league ground, and I, I just think it's magic. Uh, it just shows the tradition and the history that uh, this club has got, and uh, you know I, I think it's good for the young boys to walk around and, and see, you know, certain players up. One of our own still playing, Paul Wellens, he's on the wall. You know, 400 plus games. I mean. Surely if you're a young bloke and you're looking up there, you're thinking, God, I want to be a part of that. I want my picture on the wall one day too. So uh, uh, it's been fantastic. The surface is, uh, you know, is unreal and it could, it could take any amount of water and still play on it. It's fantastic and uh, the facilities are, are first class. It all sounds good, but your first game is coming up this weekend and that, that's on the road before that opening game you know, at your new stadium. Uh, are you all ready for it? Is, is it a case of bring it on? Um, yeah, look, I, I think going down to London is not too bad, first game up. I think uh, you know the young players in particular can learn a bit off off a, a lot of our senior players, how they prepare, so we, we all go away together and as, and the senior players, they've got their own um, ways they prepare for games and uh, I think young blokes will look and say, well, you know, how come this bloke's been playing for 10 years and see how they prepare and get themselves right to play consistently well each week. So I think the young blokes are going to learn something for a trip like that. Uh, I think the older blokes are going to get to, especially the newer boys that have come into the club, get a chance to go away with the other blokes and uh, uh, mix with them, have team meetings with them and, um, you know, get up and even smaller things like having breakfast with each other. But it's a good good opportunity to get them to meet each other on, on a, a bit more... Uh, on trips away sort of thing so I'm really looking forward to the trip um, and saying that I'm, 
the Broncos have bought very well in the off season. I'm sure they're going to have a, a good year, good competition. They've they've got some their experience, bought some experienced players to the club that have been involved in a lot of grand final victories. You know, I think there's about five players in the club that have been involved in NRL grand finals. And between them, a lot of players that have played for Australia or New South Wales in amongst that as well. So, uh, and uh, bought well at, at other things. You know, they're, uh, for a start, got two very good hookers, you know, uh, two good halves, both got good kicking games. Um, you know, so they, they've built up in a, a lot of lot of areas that they probably needed to build up in. So we're expecting, we, we, we're not quite sure what to expect really, because we haven't been able to get much footage on them or what they're going to play. But uh, you know, I'd imagine they're excited, and I imagine they're looking forward to the to the start of the new year. So uh, I'm expecting a very hard match. Sounds like a bit of a journey into the unknown, but uh, all the best with the game and the rest of the season. Cheers. Cheers thank you. Cheers. Well, with uh, Brian McDermott, who's the, uh, the man in charge of the team that is defending the Super League crown, is that a nice position to be in? You, you know, kind of going there with something you achieved last year? We, uh, we've gone through all this. We, uh, we've done our celebration and our back slapping, and uh, as of midnight on New Year's Eve 2011, we weren't champions anymore. That's how we regarded it. We're going at it. Uh, you know, just like every other team, we're attacking. The, we're attacking the thing. We're not defending it. So, you know, we have no right to uh, to uh, to uh, assume authority over any other team, other than the fact that we want to be we want to win it again. So, uh, that's our philosophy. It's, uh, I think we I think we come unstuck defending. We're always trying to uh, second guess what other teams are going to do. Let's our philosophy. Let's go out and attack it and let's win it again. Well, we heard Kevin Zinfield just uh, you know at the front there. He was talking about how you kind of were looking at what you did wrong last season and how it how it all finished. So you. I suppose you're hungry, aren't you, to make sure everything's perfect? Well, I don't think you've got to be an expert on rugby league to realise that some of the things we did last year just wasn't good enough. And certainly, in some games, we were terrible. Uh, and only by by uh, a great effort from a few a few people on and off the field did we did we finish in style and, and did we get the job done. Uh, but as Kev says, we we feel like this is some unfinished business, and we we're very keen on performing at least. We're very keen on keen on playing well, and we want to play well. And week in week out, we'd like to play well. And uh, you know, we believe that will get the job done anyway. But that's our that's our priority is to make sure we play well. And last year we didn't we didn't do that in in too many games. So again, we've got some unfinished business. That we, uh, we we want to put that to bed. How's the squad looking in terms of what you've done in terms of recruitment? Is it is it stronger? Do you think the group this time around? Uh, we lost Keith Sini, we've lost Danny Bedeiras, uh, we lost Alan Uh You know, the three big names there that we're, uh, that we'll have to say to Ratu. You don't replace those, but I think we've got some real excitement in Callum Watkins and Zach Ardaker. Kyle Ablett stepped up last year and uh, played at a level, you know, probably his best back end of the season that he's had, showed some form. Brett Delaney in the second row, uh, you know, also showed some form in, in a position that he's not familiar with or hasn't been familiar with for a few years. Uh, and those pivots, you know, Maguire, Simfield were brilliant, and Rob Burrow was, you know, is, can't be enough said about him. So, uh, while we have lost some significant players there, I feel as a squad, uh, we've got a lot more, uh, a greater balance in what we do. I was talking to, to Roy Simmons and he was talking about his youngsters that got their chance partly out of necessity last year and how they thrived in that environment. They'll be better for that experience. Same with your guys as well because, you know, they're a season wiser, they're a bit more used to what it's all about. Well, I, if you look at what Roy did with Saints, I think they went through, uh, they did go through a, a bit of an indie crisis and they lost Eastman for a lot of the season and Leon Price for a lot of season. They had some big names missing for a lot of that season and... Uh, Young Lomax and Gaskill both stepped up and, and, and probably did them a great job. And you know what Royce, the leadership he must have shown them, you know, to even get them in anywhere near the grand final. I, I think uh, you know it's testimony to his coaching. So I think they are going to be a lot stronger this year. And both of those young fellas, Gaskill and Lomax, uh, they'll be better for it. They'll be a real threat this year. I'm sure your guys, your young guys, will be better, aren't they? Because they're, they're more experienced now, aren't they? Yeah, they are, and you know they got they got a bit more experience under the belt. They got a few games and. Uh, I just think with the young kids, you, you've got to give them those games, you've got to let them play a lots and lots and lots of games and uh, if you can do that, you're going to be there or thereabouts, hopefully while they're doing those lots and lots of games that they're producing as well and 
sometimes the biggest lesson for any young player is how he plays when he plays, how he reacts to it when he plays poor. Uh, so there's, there's a bit in it. It's not just a case. Well, he's a good young player, therefore let him let him go and he, he, he'll produce. You've got to you've got to take him through the dark times as well. And uh, you know, some of our players had that last year with some of our performances. So we're uh, sorry. Do you cut the younger players a bit more slack last season because they were new to it? Now is it a case of you're expecting them to produce week in week out? I, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to. I'd have your uh, in in general no actually you don't if uh, if a Jamie Peacock or a Kemi Simfield was to play poor for the for a for a game history says they're going to get back there if a young fella plays poor you're not so worried going to be with the following week but at the same time you know he may have had three or four belting games before that so it's uh, about, you, you treat each case each each case as it comes but. You know the philosophy being you want to stick with the young people you want to uh, coach them and let them play some games as that's how they learn do as many drills in training as you want and see as much footage they need to play games you mentioned doing drills in training and practice and all that you've done all that now it's time to bring the real stuff on isn't it it's game time well you can't that's it you can't uh, pre-season's good and one of the uh, other negatives of our competition which is well noted is that we have about a uh, a, a pre-season lasts about two afternoons and a, and, a, and a bright sunny morning before you know it it's come round again uh, but you know in fairness I'm not you know these fellas uh, they don't you know as uh, Leeds we as quite a few clubs are the same nobody goes on a big eating binge or a big drinking binge so they, they'll train the majority of the year round I can't wait for the season to start get, get into the routine and the week in week out stuff It does seem like only yesterday you know we're all here for the, the grand final you know Leeds against St Helens and here you are again doing an interview about the new season. That's it. That's it. Uh, and let's hope, fingers crossed, if we're uh, if we're fortunate enough and play well enough, we're we're here again in a few months' time talking about the grand final again. All right, excellent. Hopefully. Good, good finish for you. Thank you very much. This is the Probis Try Line with Phoenix Multimedia Productions and the Independent. That's in. Then we're almost ready for the new Super League season, the Stobart Super League season, as it's to be called for the next three years. It promises to be an exciting and thrilling campaign. This has been the Probis Try Line, the Rugby League podcast. It's a Phoenix Multimedia Productions audio presentation for the Independents.